Yes, yes, yes. What is going on, everybody? All oh, JD here. Welcome to Raytronology. And here, here we have something incredible. Something we're going to talk about. Something that honestly I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was going on. Obviously, we have a new president of the United States. Hold on. I got to edit this. My bad, y'all. My bad. There we go. No. See, I done messed it up. All right. So we have a new president of the United States, y'all. So in case you didn't know, in case you've been living under a rock, this is what's going on. Now, I'm not here to get all political and all that. Oh, no, we are not doing that. Oh, I know. I know. Everybody hates everybody. It's all good. It's all good. Everybody hates everybody. But I just think it's real interesting, and I want to highlight on something that I've been seeing, something that I've just been looking at, and there's a lot that's going on in regards to the presidency, the world, because believe it or not, it has a big effect on what happens to you, your kids, and your kids' kids. Like, real quick, we got stuff going over there in Ukraine right now, and Putin's pissed, and he's talking about doing some extra stuff, so... At the end, of it, go look into it. It's been all over the news today. And I do want to talk about certain things like this when it pertains to stuff that's real important, because I think there's a lesson to be learned in everything. And today I want to talk about Trump's cabinet picks. And I know you're probably thinking, wait, what? Nope. Why would you want to talk about Trump's cabinet picks? Well, let me let you know. So here's the thing. I want to go down some of these Trump cabinet picks so far because I think there's a huge, huge lesson to be learned. First things first, the first time around, the first time around for the president elect Donald Trump, he kind of didn't know what he was doing. He was listening to, mind you, he's never been a president before. So he probably didn't know what he was doing, probably trying to figure it out, uh, didn't know where to lean on, who to trust, where to go, go to left, go to right. He didn't know. And he's in a new position just trying to figure it out. Now, he's actually done the job. He's actually had some experience in it. And this is for anybody in any new job. You have to learn how to navigate the waters. So I guess that's a good lesson. Let's start there. When you're starting a new job, you're starting, at, whether it be in corporate and you're on a new team, a new sports team, you got to learn how to navigate the waters and never know who to trust, who you can rock with, who you shouldn't rock with. And that's important because the company you keep speaks volumes about you. If you're joining a new team and you're out there with the people that are negative on the team, they don't cheer when somebody, they don't get happy or cheer when somebody makes a basket or hits a home run, if it was baseball, whatever sport, last person on the bench, they're unhappy, they're walking around, they don't work hard. It's going to rub off on you, but let's say you're not the star, but you're rocking with the star. Uh, you guys click. You guys are – everybody kind of knows their role on team, so you play your role. You play hard. You do what you have to do no matter what it's in. If you're in corporate, you're in a new job, you come in, you do your, you do your job, you network effectively. When you get a chance to get in front of people, you you, you don't outshine the master, but you make your presence felt. Now he knows what he's doing. So second time around, he's going to put people in place. And some of these people even run against him. He's going to put people in place that are going to benefit him and to help get the job done and get the mission complete. So let's go down some of these cabinet picks. So you guys might be able to see it. You might not. But this is from CBS News. This is, these are the picks so far. Uh, that might be a little better. So we got Susie Wiles, White House Chief. Chief of Staff Susie Wiles. Secretary of State Marco Rubio. Remember, he was a presidential candidate not too long ago. Attorney General Matt Matt Gates. Uh, he's a bulldog. Deputy Attorney General Todd Blanche. HHA Secretary Robert F. Kennedy. A lot of people, Robert F. Kennedy, huge on... Uh, going to be going through the FDA, going to be doing a whole bunch of different stuff in regards to our health. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. 
Do I see any major changes? Nope. Don't see it because at the end of the day, we all know our food is not the best quality. If you've traveled abroad, if you traveled anywhere and you've had food from anywhere or, or, or anywhere over the world and then you came back, your your body let you know that this food is not good for you. I mean, your body reacted. If it reacted like mine did, then that already let me know. I went to Egypt, had food. I came back, couldn't stay out of the bathroom for two weeks, literally 14 days when I came back. So that's another big one. Uh, office management, budget director, Ross Vought. Uh, Let's see who we got. UN ambassador, Elise uh, Stenfick. I'm, I'm going to be messing up names. Bad with, uh, I, I will try my best. Borders are Tom Harmon. He's another guy. Bulldog. Bulldog. Defense Secretary Pete Hakes, Hakes, Hexeth. Ah, uh, no, I'm messing that up. <laughs> you stupid. National Security Advisor Matt Walsh. That's another one. Uh, who we got on here? We got uh, Linda McMahon, Secretary of Education. Who knows what's going to be going on there? We know Elon Musk is in the. We know Elon Musk is in the dang on um cabinet. I think Vivek is in the uh, Vivek is in the cabinet. Director of National Intelligence Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, yeah, this this cabinet is uh, Department of Government Efficiency. Doge. Shout out to listen. Shout out to all my crypto people. Bitcoin is at ninety four thousand. The last time I checked, I haven't checked it in a couple of hours, but I think it's like a sixty eight to seventy percent chance it might touch a hundred thousand. I think if it touches a hundred thousand, it's gonna dump off crazy that's just me because that's like the milestone oh it's at 100 it's gonna have a crazy sell-off after that I, I just that's what i think but bitcoin to the moon shout out to all my people it's over nine thousand. listen shout out to all my bitcoin people rock with y'all so doge pop two once this was named the department of government efficiency i wonder if they're just doing this to mess with us are they doing it to mess with us government Department of Government Efficiency. I, I swear to God, if there's somebody in the back room and Elon was just like, you know what? What's the acronym for Doge that we could just make up an, an uh, appointment, make up a, a cabinet seat? What can we do? I got it. Doge, the Department of Government Efficiency. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Elon Musk and Vivek Ramis, uh, Ramis Wani. Wani. Uh, I apologize for butchering the name. Vivek, uh, billionaire in his own right, Elon Musk. We already know he's uh, the modern-day Iron Man, pretty much. So this cabinet is on point. Like, Avengers assembled. Did, did Trump uh, assemble the Avengers? Did he, <laughs> did he assemble? Did he assemble the Avengers? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that Trump, this time around, we're going to see how good we're going to see. Oh, and I didn't even remember about this one. Centers for Medicine and Medicaid Services Administrator, Dr. Oz. Now, Dr. Oz and Oprah are tight, and the Democratic Party actually really, um, I remember Kamala was on Oprah, uh, Oprah. She did a stint on Oprah, and, and I don't know what the connection is there. Maybe there isn't one. Maybe there is one. But who knows? But I think that's a real interesting choice. So as far as the, this Avenger-like team, I think he's got uh, – I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. Do I think anything will happen that will ultimately – make a difference in a lot of people's everyday lives? No. Nope. But do I think now if this is true and there are because there are things at play that we will that regular common folk will never see or hear about or anything like that. So there are always the powers behind the powers. You know, things happen and, and Mainstream media is they just lie to the general public on a regular basis. And I think 
that time is up. But do I think anything or anybody on this list will make a big difference in my everyday life? No. Ultimately, it's up to me. If it is to be, it's up to me. It's up to me to get myself together, to get my life right. None of these people on this list are coming to save me or none or you or anybody that's listening to this right now. Understand, nobody's coming to save you. You got to go get it and figure it out on your own. Because if you don't, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be your problem. And nobody's going to come help you with it. So I think that's the main thing here. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people for the macro, for the country, you know, the micro, that's up to your state officials. That's up to you to put the people in office you want, want representing you. And hopefully you vote them in and they help you out and make your life easier. But at the end of the day, for me, it's up to me. And for you, it's going to be up to you. But do you think that for the good, for the macro, that this cabinet can can make a difference for the macro for the entire America. Yes, a strong America is good for the world. And I think when America is strong, when America is unified, whether you're on the right, the left, the up, the down, it really don't matter. At the end of the day, the votes are in. The American people have spoken. And at this point, everybody needs to unify. And I I, I did see a lot of this growing up. I mean, but I, I was very young, so I really was, wasn't paying attention to it like maybe I do now. But it's about unifying. All right. If your side lost, roll back in four years, go at it again, get your strategy right, prepare. You have year, you have four years to prepare to get somebody to build somebody up, as we say in uh, wrestling. You build up a, a nice superstar and you throw them out there and hope they stick. This is Trump's last term, regardless of anything. So we will have a new president uh, next time around in four years. So it, it, I hope that people unify. And I because I haven't really seen people unify, I've just seen a lot of divisiveness. I've seen a lot of d- division amongst people, uh, especially amongst friends, amongst households, amongst uh, husbands and wives and sons and daughters and it's, it's crazy it's like what's going on here but i hope that this cabinet does something meaningful and impactful to better the lives of everybody in america because at the end of the day we're all here we're on american and i want everybody to be unified if your side lost cool now let's help let's help everybody because at the end of the day that's what it's supposed to be. A strong America helping everyone, not just helping your side and effort everybody else. But that's a perfect world. And we all know humans are far from perfect. But I do want to talk about unity. All right. Unity, question mark. And here's the reason why. We see a lot of unity on the right side. A lot of unity there. The left We're not going to sit here and say there's unity on the left because at the end of the day, when Kamala was first running, they really didn't want her. They really don't. They didn't like her. They they, did. Her own party didn't like her. They kind of handcuffed her in the beginning. They didn't let her get out there and, and, and do what she wanted to do. Then Biden wins. And then I guess they just land on her to try to appeal to, uh, to try to appeal to you know the black voters because they could throw her out throw her out there and say oh she's a black woman vice president yay but her own party really didn't want her if you kind of look at how they were moving when Biden was president they didn't want Kamala Harris they didn't let her talk they didn't let her do anything they put her on a border and then next thing you know Joe Joe Biden has to drop out and There's no primary. They just kind of stick her up there. And it's like they were throwing stuff against the wall to see what stuck. So there's the that party right now is not a lot of unity just because you never know what's going on in someone else's house, right? You know what they allow you to know. When you go over somebody else's house, everything looks good on the surface, but you don't know that 
They hate each other's guts. So you don't know that they had a big argument before you got there. And then as soon as you come to the door, the switch is flipped and everybody's cool. Because they will never show you that because it's none of your business. Quite frankly, it's none of your business. So the the Democratic Party right now, I don't I wouldn't say they're in shambles. I would just say they're not unified. There was there's probably infighting going on there. Uh, and not to say that that doesn't happen on the Republican side too, but the Republicans know how to unify. When when it's time for the Avengers to assemble, they know how to unify and stay on code. The, the, the Democrats, have, it's, it's kind of hard for them because they really didn't like Kamala Harris. And I don't think deep down they really didn't want Kamala Harris, but the, the election was like 100 days away. What, what were they supposed to do? Joe Biden is looking worse and worse by the day. I don't know if you've seen that picture of all the world leaders getting together. And Joe Biden was in the, the bushes somewhere. The president was in the bushes somewhere. And then when the reporters tried to get everybody to rock back out and say, yo, let's go come back over here and take the picture. They couldn't do it. Everybody just said F that and walked away. Big no, no. He's stupid. Nope. So I don't we we looking bad out here. And who are no, I'm not even going to say that. So we looking bad out here as a country, as a people, we look bad because if your leader looks bad, you look bad. So listen, I would say everybody, make sure you go out there and do what you got to do for yourself. Lead your family, lead your household to all my brothers out there uh, or my guys, lead your brothers, lead, lead your house, go figure it out, go make sure your family's straight, live a good life. And, and make sure you're leading from the front and doing what you got to do because no one's coming to save you, but there needs to be unity. That is important. Unity in your house. And in this house, the American house, there needs to be unity. Probably won't be, but there should be. And that's all I got to say about that. So with that being said, we're looking bad out here. Biden was in the bushes. It's not a good look. So hopefully we get it together. We will see what happens moving forward. I'm looking forward to the next four years. I'm looking forward to see if America can prosper. I'm looking forward to see what I do and how I grow as a person, how my family grows, how my friends grow. I, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope I hope everybody does what they got to do to grow as well. So with that being said, RJD here, Rayshon Ology coming at you. I am out. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.